Hi everybody, Matt Lawton here. This is the Astrological Winds channel and we are going to look at the astrological forecast, weather forecast for May 4th through 10th, pretty much the first week, full week of May here anyway, fully in our spring and tourist season in the Northern Hemisphere. And First thing, I just want to <clears throat> re-mention again, and I'm not going to get back into the meaning of it. You can go back to my last video and look at the May or listen to the May monthly forecast. This is the week. In fact, today, May 4th, Monday, is the day that the nodes are changing signs. And the north node is going into Gemini, and the south node is going into Sagittarius. So it's time to sort through all that information, try to figure out what's fact, what's fiction, try to leave behind the old beliefs and values that are blinding us to what is. So a lot more information in detail on that in the last blog, so just go back to that. I am not gonna go through that again. Okay, um, the big player again this week or is Mercury, although we're getting a lot of Sun, Mercury, Neptune energy this week. So two big, big, bigger, there are bigger things. There's the, it's the Sun and Mercury are doing their superior conjunction, which is their non-retrograde conjunction and um, that's actually today to Monday and like most other conjunctions it's a really good time for initiating things and the other big event that is gonna pull that Sun Mercury conjunction into um, you know focus two is on Thursday when we have the full moon in Scorpio and Neptune is involved with the Sun and Mercury and the full moon all week, too. So they're our main players this week, um, the Sun, Mercury, Neptune, and the full moon. And um, Neptune is actually going to be sextiling the Sun-Mercury conjunction, and it will trine the full moon. So in a good flow with Mercury. So I, and the sun and the moon is Neptune. It's gonna, Neptune's gonna feed a lot of like idealism, a lot of inspiration, creativity, artistic energy, spiritual energy into the download this week. And so the sun Mercury conjunction on Monday, which is today sets off the week and in Taurus, and um, neither the sun nor nor Mercury is strongly dignified or hurt in Taurus, um, so or debilitated basically. So so basically, you know, in a in a sign where they're kind of just cruising along, and the the time when you have a conjunction with sun and Mercury is usually the, a time when we feel the need to express some of our thoughts out to others that, you know, there's something we have to say. So there's a, usually a lot of connections, a lot of communication, a lot of that, of, um, of that kind of energy going out there because there's something that we need to get out there. Now, the danger to Sun Mercury is that we're in a very subjective mind frame. Um, so, like, it's really all about us for us, you know? So, like, we, we do feel the need to get these messages out, but the, the danger is, and we get reception to those messages, too, the danger is, is on the comeback, is, like, the listening part and the receiving part to our messages may not get through that subjective shield we have going on. And in particular in Taurus too, because like 
Taurus is so set in its ways and really is like a traditional, more conservative energy as far as like taking any chances or anything. So, so it's going to feel like it's right and where it's going is like, you know, this true steady course and it's not going to be easily influenced to be taken off that course. And, and like I said, it's not that you don't get the reception to your ideas. It's like, you're the one who's not listening to the feedback that well to what's going out there. So there's kind of like, almost like a bit of an obsession on a subjective side in the way you're thinking and communicating and therefore is kind of shutting down the receptiveness and listening on the other level. But just a really good time to get new things going. Like, you know, traditionally, it's a good time to start a business, for instance, you know. So so there's like, you know, those kind of things that are, are available to us now. When the full moon locks into this thing, it's going to shift the energy a bit, though. The full moon is in Scorpio. And Scorpio is... It, is not the moon is not happy in Scorpio as far as its normal functioning. And the reason being so is Scorpio is one of the weaker signs. It's in fall there and it really is has a tendency to really dig up deep, deep issues, deep emotional issues that have been buried subconscious issues that are, you know, controlling part of our lives that we're not possibly aware of. And so like Taurus and Scorpio create an axis together and that's the resource axis. And, you know, for Taurus, it's all about enjoying the material pleasure of the physical existence. And there's really nothing wrong with that. That's what we're here for. Unless we are using that material and those things and sweeping under the rug the harder emotional issues. Taurus doesn't really like to deal with deep emotional issues. It would rather stay in a nice rhythmic flow with knowing the emotions that come up and how to handle them. Well, Scorpio is like, well, I'm, you know, going to bring up these plate of issues from the underworld, your underworld, and, you know, have and shake up that Taurus like comfort zone. Taurus, when confronted with deep issues, has a tendency to sweep them under the rug has a tendency to go for the comfort things instead and not deal. So Scorpio is like the guy that gets up in your face and makes you deal. And, and you know, there's no choice in the matter anymore, you know. So, you know, when you look at it from, a, from that perspective too. Scorpio is like, you know, the resource perspective is bringing in the fact that, you know, resources are not just yours, that, you know, there's all these resources that are shared. And, and Scorpio also reminds us that not all resources are material either, that you can have all the materials in the world and still be unhappy emotionally. And that means you've been sweeping this stuff under the rug, not dealing with it. So Scorpio is going to confront the Taurus energy of Sun and Mercury. And it's going to try to shake it up. I and you got to remember, too, these are two fixed signs. So this is not, these are going to be like, you know, the two bulls that lock horns. They're not going to give very quickly. And so, like, you know, fixed energy, stubborn signs, you know, stubborn 
do you like they're right? Don't tell me that I'm not right kind of thing. So, so this is the oppositional energy that we're having set up this week. And, and so, you know, look at the houses that it falls in your chart and that'll tell you, you know, the, you know, the axis that it's falling in for you the house axis is that it's falling in for you where these issues are going to come up. And then if you have any planets that are within a two degree orb of the moon, then they're going to influence on an aspect that is, they're going to influence that energy also. So anyway, the Neptune part is going to help a little bit though, because it's in a trine and sextile with the moon and sun Mercury during this full moon. And so it's going to feed a lot of inspiring ideas. It's going to feed a lot of idealism, but not so much at a point where you're getting unrealistic about reality. And I'll tell you, Scorpio and Taurus probably aren't going to let you get too unrealistic about reality in the first place. So this, that's a really good feed. So it's like definitely a really good week for like getting the creative, stimulating ideas that inspire you like creatively, artistically, spiritually into like action. It's, you know, use that sun Mercury conjunction to activate some of that stuff and you know just you know be prepared later in the week for that full moon to come in and really force us to take a look at some of this deeper stuff it's kind of interesting too with the venus retrograde coming up next week right um and we i talked about that in the monthly again so you can go back to that in gemini and so like Probably a lot of these things that are going to come up during the Taurus, um, Scorpio, full moon thing going on may give us an idea about which relationships are going to be stressed during that Venus retrograde. You know, it could shine a light on that. The full moon always shines a light on things, brings things out up to the surface. So, um... Otherwise, the rest of the week, still Mercury, and Mercury will start to move ahead of the sun. And by next weekend, I think it's Saturday, Mercury will trine Pluto, which is just a really great aspect to look at that stuff that the full moon is going to bring up, the, the, the deeper stuff, because you won't kick your own ass about it. You'll be more like, yeah, you know, like... I see that and I, you know, and I want to get some more control over that thing with me. And like, even if that's where my energy goes, now I can like grab some of it back and become self-empowered, channel it better. I mean, Mercury, Pluto is like, you know, the laser mind, you know, like really can cut right to the core of things with that trine. It's just flowing there it's not as disturbing to the psyche it's more like interesting to the psyche it's curious it's driven you know it wants to get to that that deeper part so it really favors like deeper one-on-one -on -one connections in your relationships and just like using the mind to get deeply into things like whatever you know that idea that may be hatched during the sun mercury neptune thing it's a chance of like really like laser pointing the mind on that and focusing that uh, with the Mercury Pluto trine. And then you have Mercury Jupiter trine the very next day on Sunday. So, you know, here we are. We're telling our story again. You know, the full moon shows us, you know, we get the sun Mercury, we get some ideas. Neptune, the full moon shows us where there may be some issues with that. Mercury trines. Pluto a day or two later and it's like well now that I see the issues I really want to work on them and then Mercury turns Jupiter and it's like oh okay now I've got it all figured out time to make a plan Mercury trying Jupiter not a better time to make a plan Gr see the big picture well see how the larger structures and things are working 
and can organize and detail all that. So really good time to like work with that energy with you know, get, get some new things initiated, things that are inspiring to you, you know, don't sweep the emotional stuff that comes up under the rug, face it, look at it, don't project it out onto other people, bring it back inside. Everyone's a reflection. This whole world is a reflection. So take that information, discern what you need from it, laser point it, make a plan. Sounds like a pretty good week. Yes, I know that full moon in Scorpio can be tough. And also, you know, there's, you know, you know, the moon every day is moving. So obviously, you know, there are other times that during a day, certain times where it'll be stressed or in a flow. And so I think Tuesday we have a grand trine with the moon, Venus, and Mars, which is a real nice flow, really good for communications with other people and relationships and doing things with them. And then Wednesday, we end up with a T-square with the moon and Uranus and Saturn, where it can be like tough to deal with the restrictions that, you know, things that are going on and make us want to move away. So like, you know, on the daily basis, and I don't do a daily thing, sometimes the moon you know, can take our emotions for two or three hours or part of a day and kind of, you know, sweep us away for a little while. But anyway, real good chance to get some new ideas going, some new projects going, things that inspire us and deal with the stuff that comes up and get ready next week for that Venus retrograde. And remember... North Node in Gemini now. So our job for the next 18 months, discern the facts from the fiction in all this information that we're getting. All right. Until most likely next week, this is Matt Lawton, the Astrological Winds Channel. I am available for all kinds of astrological services, elections, horary readings, predictive readings, anything you might need. So it's Matt, M-A-T-T-H-U-E-823 at gmail.com if you'd like to get in touch with me. Thanks for following the Astrological Winds channel. Please become a follower on YouTube and please spread it around to other people who might be interested. Thank you so much.